Hello my friends. Welcome back to Remote Learning for TTC through Radio Lessons. My name is Teacher Emma. As usual, I'll be taking you through today's lesson. My dear friends, as you are aware, due to coronavirus, we are all at home. To support continued learning, Rwanda Education Board is partnering with UNICEF and other partners to support remote learning for all levels of education, including TTC. My dear friends, today we have an interesting subject. And today's lesson concerns all the three years. Year one, year two, and year three. So, we have started a series of teaching methods and practice lessons. <laughs> Good. And today, I would say these lessons are going to be concerning especially students who are doing ECLPE. Are we together, friends? When I talk of ECLPE, I think you all know what I mean. Early childhood, lower primary education. And um, today, we will have, as I mentioned, it's going to be our first teaching methods and practice for pre-primary lesson. This lesson is for all TTC student teachers studying in the early childhood and lower primary option. We ask, or I want to take this opportunity and ask all years of TTC students to participate in this lesson. Even if you have started this before, it is important to review what you have learned. In this lesson, we shall be learning about how to teach numeracy to young children, specifically shapes and direction concepts in the pre-primary syllabus. Great! This is in accordance with Unit 6 from the Year 1 TMP or teaching practice, teaching methods and practice syllabus. We will learn why it is important for young children to learn shapes and directions. We will also see how children grow in their understanding of shapes and directions, starting with the simplest steps and moving to more complex ones. So before we go very far, as usual, ensure that your environment is free from noise. Make sure you have your notebook and pen ready. You also need some real objects to make shapes with. I recommend gathering some five to six sticks of similar length. Also, a piece of string or a rope that will be helpful. I'll give you time to get ready. Find these materials and put them close to you, wherever you are sitting. Get ready with these materials now. And to you, my fellow tutors, as our dear students are getting these materials, kindly, as usual, I know you have been doing this, always follow these lessons and be able to support your students with questions that they have as regards the lessons that I teach on the radio. And again, I appreciate your honest feedback about these lessons that we are learning. Good. Now, my friends, before we start, this time round, I have an interesting warm-up for you. Okay? Let us move our bodies into different shapes. Are you ready? Perfect. I want all of you to stand up. Stretch your arms out to the side and make a horizontal line. Let me repeat. Stretch your arms out to the side and make a horizontal line. 
Good. Now, stretch your arms up above your head to make your body into a vertical line. Well done. Next, stretch your arms in front of you and curve them to make a circle as if you are hugging a big ball. Beautiful. Next, lift your right leg, bend your knee, and put your right foot on your right knee. What shape have you made? A triangle. That's right. Very good. Next. So my friends, isn't it fun to move your body into different shapes? This is a simple warm-up activity that can be done with young children to help them become more aware of shapes and directions as well as develop body coordination. I hope you liked it. Good. Now, the warm-up helped us to start thinking about shapes and directions. But let us make sure that everyone knows what we are talking about in this aspect of early numeracy. Good. I want you to take a minute to write down as many shapes as you can think of. Are you ready? Go. Good. Did you come up with a good list? Here are some of my shape words. I want you to see what you have written down and see whether there is a relationship. So my first word is a circle. We have a circle, a square, Triangle, rectangle, hexagon, rhombus, pentagon, trapezoid or trapezium. This list of words is all what we call two-dimensional shapes or flat shapes. This means we can cut them out and draw them on a paper. We have another category of shapes or shape names which describe three-dimensional shapes or solid shapes. These shapes have space inside them. Some of these solid shape words Include sphere, cone, cube, cylinder, pyramid, and so many others. Did you have any of those words on your list? Congratulations if you did. Now, let us look at the second part of the concept we are studying today. Shapes and directions. What do we mean by directions? I want you to take some time and think. Write down direction words or you have used or that you get to see people commonly use. Write them down. Great. Did you come up with a good list? 
Mm. Let us see. Here are some of my direction words. Above. Under. Next to. To the left. To the right. On top of. Behind. In front. Let me repeat these words. Above. Under. Next to. To the left. To the right. On top of. Behind. In front. Do you have any of those words on your list? Well done. Now. Let's see why children need to learn shapes and directions at an early age. Do you agree? Do you think it is important for children to learn about or to learn about the concept of shapes and directions? Let us see. These words allow people to see and describe the world around them. Children as young as 18 months can start distinguishing between colors and shapes. This understanding and vocabulary later helps young children to appreciate and create works of art such as drawing a face, starting with a circle shape, becoming attentive to lines. Shapes and space help children recognize numbers and letters too. And overall, it builds children's visual discrimination skills. I want you to underline that word. Children are able to have the visual discrimination skills developed. Now, this means being able to look closely and see what is the same or different. For example, a P and B and D, those are letters of the alphabet. Letter P, letter B, Letter D are all in the same shape. What makes them different is their position and the direction they face. When children have stronger visual discrimination skills, it will help them learn to read and write. I want you to take a second and write down this important keyword, visual discrimination. Direction words are important as well as to help children follow directions given by teachers, parents, and others. Listening and following directions is a key part of the school readiness. For example, I am going to give you some directions that I want you to follow. Are you ready to try? Good. Put your pen on top of your notebook. And I want you to underline the direction words. Put your pen on top of your notebook. Good. Now, put your pen below your notebook. Next, put your pen to the right of your notebook. Aha. Uh -huh. Did you follow all the directions carefully? 
This understanding will help children to succeed in school and even at home. Now, let's look at how children's knowledge of shape and directions concept builds from simple to more complex. What do you think is the simplest place to start? Write down your idea. Young children start by using and following directional words. In the pre primary curriculum, this expectation is found in the subtopic called space and directions or kumenya aho ari na in Kinyarwanda. In grade 1, children should start observing the position of things in the world around them. Let me give you an example. The book is inside the bag. They should also start following directions by moving objects according to instructions. I have another example. For example, stand behind your chair. It is not specifically described in the curriculum, but it is also helpful for children at this stage to learn descriptive words for types of lines such as curved, straight, diagonal, and so on. Are we together, my friends? Great. In grade two, children build their skills by starting to recognize and use shape words. This expectation is found in the subtopic called shapes and lines or amashushonjero na merechezo in Kinyarwanda. Circle and triangle are the simplest shapes to start with. Can you think of why? Why do you think a circle and a triangle are the simplest shapes to start with? Circle and a triangle or these shapes look very different from others. A square and a rectangle, however, they are very similar and therefore should not be taught at the same time. In fact, in the pre-primary curriculum, children learn rectangle first in grade 2, square comes last in grade 3. Young children might also learn to recognize other artistic shapes such as the hearts, the stars, the diamonds, and so many others. This is great too. But these are not mathematical shapes, names, and therefore are not included in our pre-primary numeracy curriculum. My dear friends, it is important to note that it is all only in grade 3 when children are expected to be able to draw different shapes successfully. Young children can attempt, but because drawing accurately requires strong finer motor skills, it should not be emphasized much in the lower grades. What about solid shapes words? When do you think they should be introduced? Good. Knowledge of solid shapes comes later at primary level. In pre-primary, children can recognize the difference between the flat shape and the solid shape but they are only expected to use the two-dimensional shape words. Even though 
most of the object children interact with are three dimensional they start by the associated two dimensional flat shapes for example a ball is a real sphere but children start by recognizing that a ball is round like a circle. A roof is really a pyramid. But children start by recognizing that it has a pointed top and a flat bottom like a triangle. That's a lot of information. I hope you are following my friend. Let's take a break. Good. Let us try to follow the steps that we just talked about using the objects you gathered at the beginning of the lesson. To start, take your sticks and place one down horizontally from left to right. Now, place another stick next to the first one on the left, but in an up and down vertical position. Arrange the sticks so that they are touching each other at the bottom to make a corner. What does it look like? Can you describe what you see to someone next to you? As I'm doing this, mine looks like letter L. Is that what you have? Very good. Now, take the string you have, put the two ends together and make a big round space in the middle. What shape did you make? The one I have here, it looks like a circle. Excellent. Now, look around the room where you are. Do you see something that has the same circle shape? A plate maybe, or an electric socket, or a curtain rod, all these round shapes, or all those are round shapes. Now, take your sticks and make a square. How many sticks do you use? to make a square. Beautiful. There are four. Now, what do you have to do to make your square into a rectangle? Uh-huh. Do you think to add another stick on just two of the sides on top or on the bottom? Me too. Now, what do you have to do to make your square into a rectangle? Do you think to add another stick on just two of the sides on top and bottom? Me too. Great work. We have started with simple directions and moved to more complex shape making and transformation. I hope that this exercise gives you more ideas of activities you can do with young children starting from grade 1 to grade 3 of pre-primary. My dear friends, we're coming to the end of our lesson. As we conclude, let us review some of the key points that we learned about teaching shapes and directions to young children. 
Shapes and directions are very important for young children to learn about because it helps them develop language for describing the world around them. That's number one. Two, it helps them to follow directions. We have seen in several instances where even old people get problems with directions. It's because maybe they didn't really master the concept very well at a very early age. They also appreciate and create art. It also helps them to develop visual discrimination, which helps with reading and writing. And also, they build a foundation of geometric thinking, which will help them in science, math, and engineering problem solving as they grow up. Like other other numeracy skills, Children develop shapes and direction skills in a specific sequence that builds from simple to a more complex. You remember, my dear friends, when we teach, we start from known to unknown or simple to complex. Space awareness starts by describing the position of objects and moving objects to different positions following directions given. Next, children learn how to describe different types of lines using words like straight, round, pointed, and so many others. After that, children learn that the names and the characteristics of these shapes, starting with simple two-dimensional or flat shapes, they begin to recognize these shapes in the environment around them. And finally, children can make and draw shapes themselves. Students, tutors, and parents, Thank you for your participation in this lesson. This lesson has been developed by Rwanda Education Board in collaboration with UNICEF, Help a Child, Right to Play, and IEE Rwanda. Always please tune in on radio and participate in these radio lessons for TTC. And dear tutors, support our students with questions that they have regarding these lessons that we teach on radio. Until next time, goodbye.